and welcome back to All About Dogs. Today, we begin the journey of exploring the different dog breeds by first breaking down the seven dog breed groups. If you've decided that you'd like to become the guardian of a new dog, a good starting point is to make sure you pick the right breed for you. It is worth remembering that no two dogs are the same, and although dogs of the same breed may look very similar, each dog will have its own unique personality. That said, the specific breed you choose will go some way to determining what type of personality and behaviours your new pup is likely to exhibit. Each individual breed has a set of personality and behavioural traits. These are the ways of being that are anticipated to come more naturally to them. It is worth noting that dogs have been selectively bred by humans over the last almost 10,000 years in order to cultivate the more desirable traits, both physical, such as build and coat type, and personality and behavioural, such as to be calm or high in energy, or have the instinct to retrieve, to chase or to sniff things out. The traits you find in one breed can be the same or very similar to those found in another breed, and it is by studying the similarities in traits that we've been able to place dogs into groups. In the United Kingdom, the official Kennel Club, an organisation with the focus of maintaining dog breed standards and best practice, is called the Kennel Club, and it is the oldest recognised kennel club in the world. They also run the UK's largest registration database for pedigree dogs, currently recognising 221 purebred dog breeds and seven breed groups. As a side note, have you ever wondered what the difference is between pedigree and purebred? Well, both pedigrees and purebreds have parents which are both of the same breed. The key difference is that for a dog to be considered as pedigree, its parents must be registered with the kennel club or with another recognised club or society. In other words, pedigree dogs have a proven and documented pure bloodline. The Working Group The working group is made up of hard-working, active breeds that flourish when given a task to do. They are known to be robust and very determined. They are always ready to work and have great stamina for physical activity. They are intelligent breeds that respond well to training. They are usually medium to giant in size and of a solid frame. They are commonly placed in such roles as guard dogs, search and rescue dogs, sled dogs, and are also used as loyal household watchdogs. In essence, these are the dogs that were specifically bred to excel in specialist non-herding jobs. However, due to their physique and intelligence, they are often utilised for herding and guarding flocks as well. If you choose a working breed, you can expect to have a dog that is smart, obedient, calm, confident, strong, protective, fearless, courageous, loyal and affectionate. The Pastoral Group Like the Working Group, the Pastoral Group is also made up of energetic, hard-working dogs that like nothing more than being given a job to do. They are known to be eager to please and very keen to learn new things. This, coupled with their high intelligence levels, makes them fairly easy to train. They both enjoy and need lots of physical and mental stimulation. Bred for their obedience and loyalty to the handler, they typically love spending time with their human family and are always ready to protect them from intruders. Pastoral dog breeds come in many shapes and sizes. This is because they were bred for a variety of jobs, each suiting different sizes and skills. These are the dogs that you would see working dutifully alongside their handlers on farms, herding and protecting livestock. With a love for the outdoors, they will work across long distances and in all weathers. The pastoral breed group is broken down into three subtypes. Herding dogs, the dogs that round up the herds. Drovers, the dogs that move the herds forwards in the right direction. And guardian dogs, the dogs that protect the herds from other beasties, such as wolves and foxes. If you choose a pastoral breed, you can expect to have a dog that is smart, trainable, obedient, independent, alert, confident, loyal, protective, 
and affectionate. The Hound Group Hound dogs are natural hunters. These are the breeds that were purposefully bred by humans to help them with hunting, either on horseback or on foot. They are strong-willed and greatly driven by their instincts to explore, seek and chase. Once they are in pursuit, they will often go at full speed, zoning out everything but the target, and can be hard to stop. Due to this natural prey drive, they're not the most reliable at following their handler's commands, but if you give them the proper training, you can work to keep their natural impulses under control. The size of hound dogs varies from the slim and long-legged to the more solid and short-legged. This is all due to the way humans have bred them for the particular jobs that they were required to do. To better understand this, let's take a look at the two subtypes of hounds. Sight hounds. Bred for their incredible eyesight, these breeds can spot their prey way out in the distance. With long legs and streamlined bodies, they are sprinters, running relatively short distances but extremely quickly, always keeping their prey in sight. The quickest of the sight hounds, and in fact of all dog breeds, is the greyhound. Hitting speeds of up to 45 miles per hour over distances of around 250 meters. Sight hounds are often known to be couch potatoes, only really requiring short but intense runs throughout the day. Scent hounds. Bred for their powerful sense of smell, these breeds could probably sniff out a needle in a haystack. Keeping the nose close to the ground, they lock on to a scent. They are dogs of endurance and can track a scent over long distances. The best scent hounds can track over rough terrain and through water, even if the scent is days old. It is believed that the long, floppy ears of scent hounds actually aids in their tracking ability by dragging on the ground as they walk, disturbing the surface and sweeping up the smells into their faces. Due to their amazing sense of smell, scent hounds have become key members of the police force, helping to sniff out things like contraband and explosive devices. The one thing that all hounds have in common is that they like nothing more than to curl up next to their human at the end of a long day. If you choose a hound breed, you can expect to have a dog that is intelligent, independent, relatively quiet, sweet and affectionate. The Gun Dog Group As the name suggests, gun dogs were originally bred to help humans when hunting game with guns, often by finding and retrieving game birds. They are known to be very active and agile energetic but also calm and even-tempered. They are the naturally happy dogs. They are intelligent and reliable and when trained work well alongside their human counterparts. These dogs like to be outside and do require a lot of exercise. A bored, under-exercised gun dog can result in the unruly chewing of furniture and other belongings. Luckily these dogs love to play fetch, which can be a great way to tire them out. They will eat anything and everything and are prone to obesity so a balanced diet is key. Gun dog breeds are very loving and extremely friendly. They get on well with the whole family, even the cats. They are usually very good with children and other dogs. The gun dog, like the working dogs and pastorals, do vary in shape and size owing to the jobs that they were bred to do. But overall, they are generally sturdy and very heavy boned. There are four types of gun dogs. Retrievers. Utilised for their natural desire to retrieve, they were originally bred to help in the hunt by fetching feathered game. Retrievers are usually eager to please and very obedient. Pointers. With their natural tendency to stand still and point their muzzles in the direction of the prey, they were originally bred to alert hunters to which way to go. Pointers are usually energetic, athletic and fast, but are also even-tempered and calm. Setters. Often paired together with pointers, they also alert to the whereabouts of prey. However, rather than standing and pointing, setters use a distinctive crouching stance known as a set. Setters are usually agile and well-balanced and are happy to work in different terrains. 
spaniels. Utilised for both their retrieving instinct and also their flushing skills, spaniels were originally bred to run through the hedgerows and bushes, flushing out birds and other animals, giving the hunters the chance to take aim and shoot. Spaniels are usually easygoing, affectionate and gentle, yet lively. If you choose a gun dog breed, you can expect to have a dog that is eager to please, independent, temperamentally robust, affectionate, very friendly and social, and great with children and other pets. The Terrier Group Terriers are known to be small but fearless. They are enthusiastic, energetic and have a high prey drive. It is worth noting that dogs with a high prey drive really do need an outlet if they are to be happy and contented. Terriers in particular often like to satisfy their love of the chase with a fun game of fetch. They usually have big personalities and an even bigger voice. They are of moderate intelligence and due to their stubborn nature are rarely conventionally obedient. Training of terriers is vital in order to channel and prohibit their natural tendencies to chew and dig things up. They also have a bit of a habit of nipping and biting people, even their family members, if they're not taught bite inhibition early on. Their powerful bite is part of the reason that terriers were originally bred to hunt house and land vermin, such as rats, mice, badgers and foxes, both above and below ground. With the exception of the larger Airedale, the terrier's solid but small frame would allow it to move quite easily through burrows and sets. Today, terriers are often kept as companion dogs as they are always up for an adventure with their owner, enjoying getting out and about and happy to walk long distances. If you choose a terrier breed, you can expect to have a dog that is energetic, moderately smart, independent, stubborn, persistent, playful, possibly destructive and likely prone to barking. The Toy Group Descended from larger breeds, dogs in the toy group were specifically bred to be the ultimate companion dogs. Bred for their love of social interaction and ability to bond closely with their human. They are typically very sweet and friendly in nature and radiate what can only be described as the cute factor. They are known to make great dogs for the first time dog owner as in comparison to some of the bigger breeds, they really don't require much work. Their small size means that they don't need huge amounts of food or exercise and if permitted, would be more than happy to take up a full time role as a lap dog. They are very adaptable to any space, large or small, countryside or city. As a rule, if their human is happy, they are happy. However, they don't like to be left alone as the strong bond with their human often leads to separation anxiety. If you choose a toy breed, you can expect to have a dog that is affectionate, loyal, tactile, sensitive, sassy, alert, not very dog social and prone to separation anxiety. The Utility Group the utility group is made up of the breeds that simply don't fit the criteria of any of the before-mentioned groups and are each unique by themselves. They were bred for jobs that are now redundant. For example, the Dalmatian used to run alongside horses and carriages. The French Bulldog was used for vermin control. And the Chow Chow was a trusty all-rounder used for hunting, herding, pulling and protecting. The miscellaneous nature of this grouping means that they come in various sizes, appearances, temperaments and with varying exercise and nutritional needs. If you are unsure which utility dog might suit you, a good starting point is to research what job they were originally bred to do. But in general, if you choose a utility breed, you can expect to have a dog that is friendly, smart, loyal, curious, eager and playful. Puppers, what are you up to? Hmm? Oh, uh, just trying to figure out my traits. Oh, okay. So what have you got so far? Intelligent. Very intelligent. Sorry, of course. <laughs> Very intelligent. 
Uh, wonderful. Well, you are puppers, but that's not really a trait. Fearless. <laughs> you did run away from that spider the other day. So did you. Yes, well, it was big. It was big. What are these puppers? Oh, they didn't relate to me. Oh, no. So what have you got here? Aggressive. Oh, definitely not you. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Bad at telling you. Yeah. Oh! Papa's, that, that's why I came to find you. It's, it's your time to do your bit. Is it? Oh, I'll do this later then. Great. Okay, great. Hit it! <laughs> so, I was in the park the other day, and there's one dog. He was chasing everything that was red. He was a bulldog. <laughs> I got talking to this other dog. He was all the way from the Big Apple. He was a New Yorkie. <laughs> and this other dog, he was really not enjoying himself playing football. Not surprising though. He was a boxer. <laughs> That's all we have time for. Thank you so much for joining us. I've been Kimberly Salt. This has been All About Dogs. And until next time, you be good. If you enjoyed this video, give us a like. Don't forget to uh, subscribe and click that notification bell. You'll be barking mad not to.